Well, folks, we did it. This channel has successfully made it to 500 subscribers, and I cannot tell you guys how shocked I am at this. When I made my 100 subscriber special way back then, a few months ago, I honestly never thought I'd be making this type of video to celebrate 500, halfway to 1,000. And to all of you watching this video, and to all of you who have subscribed to my channel, I cannot thank you enough for helping me to reach this landmark, for helping all of us to reach this landmark. And I honestly hope to God that I can continue to impress you all with some of the content that I cover on this channel. With that being said, all I can give you all is a heartfelt thank you for helping us to reach this goal. And with that being said, I have decided to cover a book series that I've been wanting to talk about for a while. And this feels like the perfect occasion to talk about it. So, my fellow readers, for this 500 subscriber special, I will be talking about P. Anastasia's science fiction, romance, urban fantasy series known as Fluorescence, an entire four book series which I did not think would be up my alley, and yet throughout every single page throughout this entire series, which you can actually get in one large paper or hardback, absolutely blew me away. This entire four book series was fantastically well written, with likable characters, an engaging story, and more importantly, it had some very good romance. It had some more mature, very well written romance. It wasn't overly cheesy or anything like that. It was very well done. And honestly, you guys, I cannot recommend this series enough. So, the premise of Fluorescence is that it takes place in modern day with our four main characters of Alice, Brian, Karina, and David, our four main characters who are known as the Fluorescent Ones, and who all serve as point of view characters throughout the story. That's right, every single book throughout this entire series is told from the point of view of one of the main characters. For instance, the first book is told from Alice's perspective, the second book by Brian, the third by Karina, and the fourth by David all of whom are connected with their contact with this alien species known as the Saviors. Now, the Saviors have contacted these four for the simple fact that their race is dying from a mysterious disease. And they are using human DNA to try to see if they can save their species. But the way they go about this, the morals that they do this with, really rubs the wrong way all four of our main characters. We come to find out that these saviors are not these benevolent aliens just looking to save their race, which they are trying to do, but they will do so at any cost whatsoever, regardless of the moral consequences that occur. So these four characters are all brought together to try to ignite the hidden fluorescence that has been injected into every single human being. And all of them have unique abilities with their type of fluorescence that they have. And the main term for this is that they all have a similar mark of glowing skin, like an LED light, or like some of those rave lights that you see at major parties, like, you know, those glow sticks? Yeah, it's something like that. But Fluorescence itself was very well done, and each book was very well-paced, well length, with a few hundred pages each per. Not to mention, all the characters were very well done. But, for the sake of context, I am going to go over every single book of the Fluorescence series, one by one. And I hope I can continue to keep your all's attention for that long. Anyways, let's get started with book one. So here we have the first book of the series, Firestarter, told from the point of view of Alice, one of our main female characters. Now, to put it simply, one of the things I definitely liked about all of the characters that are introduced in this series is that all of them, in some way, shape, or form, have some type of scars, whether emotional, physical, or mental. Alice, however, stands out among the group as the more 
innocent of the bunch. She's never really had any major issues until the start of this book. The only major part of her past that would be considered scarring is the fact of her dad walking out on her and her mother. But other than that, she's lived a fairly normal life. And at this point, she's just starting out on high school, where she meets the new student, Brian, our second main character, and one of the main male characters of the series. Now, throughout this whole book, this one was very interesting, but also I felt like it was more innocent, more lighthearted. It definitely had its darker moments at some points, but throughout it all, this one definitely felt the most lighthearted, if I might say. But that's because Alice's point of view is more innocent, it's more brighter than some of the other characters in this story. Alice herself, her fluorescence allows her to be a starter in a way, meaning that anyone she comes in contact with who also possesses fluorescence, she can activate it and make it more dominant in a human being, which is exactly what happens between her and Brian when Brian asks her to a school dance, and by accidentally coming in contact with him and using her powers, she actually starts up Brian's fluorescence. And by doing so, she not only finds out that Brian at one point had a pacemaker installed due to the fact that he had an irregular heartbeat, but she comes to find out that by activating his fluorescence, She's actually helped him quite a bit. She's made him healthier, made him stronger, and from that, their relationship starts up. She comes to learn about Brian, about how he wants to be a comic book writer when he grows up, and she sees some of the artwork that he does, which is very dark, sad, and really tells to his character, which we will get more to in book two. But Alice herself is a very innocent character, and her interactions with the Savior show this light about how they want her to help them, how they're asking her to help them to essentially save their race, and she takes to it with reluctance, but also a lot of fear. She feels like she has to constantly hide this thing, she's on edge, so all of her problems really start when this fluorescence starts up, and she engages in contact with the saviors. But she and Brian, I love how their relationship is built on this mutual trust and very well done chemistry. Where we come to find out Brian's past is not the greatest, but we'll get more into that in a bit. Alice herself, again, she's the more innocent of the bunch. I can't really express that enough. She's the brightest of the bunch, the least scarred, until further on in this series. But throughout it all, I really like the pure romance angle that was shown here. I didn't really think I would agree with it, but I did. The science fiction elements of just the bioluminescent skin just added that bit of spice. But moving on to book two is where things got a lot darker. Next up we have book two, Contagious, told from the point of view of Brian. Now. Book two stands out by itself simply because of the fact that not only is it the largest of the fluorescence book series, seriously, this sucker was like about 300 pages by itself compared to Firestarter, which is only like 100 so. Now, Contagious definitely stands out not just as being the largest, but also definitely one of the darkest of the bunch, because here we actually see Brian's full story. Like, it is mentioned in Firestarter of how he does not have a good family history, he does not have good relationships with his family, but here it is brought full-blown out into the open, and by God, it is a very depressing story. Brian essentially came from the fact that he not only had her arrhythmia, but he had an overbearing father who wanted to force Brian into the military, the same as him, and a mother who really did not care that much. In fact, the mother actually encouraged this bad behavior between the father and sons, and in fact, Brian even has an older brother, Taylor, who just, the first chance he got, walked out on the whole family just to, and I quote here, get away from it all. Get away from their father's crazy behavior and their mother, especially who was just plain crazy. Brian not only had to deal with arrhythmia, as well as his overbearing father who just viewed Brian as this disappointment, but after gaining his fluorescence and having to interact with the saviors, you definitely tell that his story takes a dark path. Like for instance, 
He constantly has to keep his mother from trying to commit suicide multiple times. And despite this, she still treats him like crap, constantly talking down to him, in fact, blaming Brian for their father's death, when in fact, Brian's father simply was killed in action. That's the sad part of the military, like, you have no idea if you're going to come back or not, but after Brian's father died, Brian's mother, in fact, tried to kill herself when Brian was just a child. And by God, I already felt bad for this character just because of the fact that he had to have a pacemaker installed until he was in high school, but just all of this is just depressing. And it really makes you feel bad for the guy, especially throughout the whole story when you see him having to struggle with this, but you also see how his and Alice's relationship furthers and grows, and I love how he kind of views Alice as this lifeline for himself, because his life has just been horrible experiences one after the other, and to have the one good thing in his life being Alice, serving as his lifeline to the world, is sweet and really sad when you think about it. So at one point, Brian finds his mother trying to commit suicide, and this time, she winds up in a mental health facility for a long time, meaning that Brian is essentially put into the foster care system, where Alice's mother, she is awesome, by the way. She goes full out to gain custody of Brian as a foster, which I think is awesome, which allows Brian and Alice to live under the same roof. More importantly, the relationship between Brian and Alice grows throughout the series. Like, we see from the saviors, as they are contacting with them, that Brian and Alice are meant to be the catalyst to helping to save their species, the saviors, that is, to find a way to use human DNA and their DNA, bioluminescent DNA, to try to find a way to save their species from this disease. But we see throughout all of this that they are constantly getting teleported Throughout their daily lives, they are constantly getting transported by the saviors to these random cities across the United States, even one time going to New York City during the time of the New Year Year's Eve ball drop in the freezing cold. Not only that, but they have to deal with an upperclassman known as Karina, whom also has, lumen has fluorescence that, quite frankly, Brian and Alice do not like Karina. Karina is essentially shown as this upper-class girl who is constantly after Brian, despite the fact that Brian is clearly taken and is not interested in her whatsoever, and yet she seemingly cannot take no for an answer, and constantly talks down to Alice. She's essentially that rich, popular girl who feels like she can pick on anyone she wants and, gets, and sleeps around with a bunch of other guys and thinks that she can get away with it. So yeah, that was Karina. Not only that, but we are also introduced to our fourth main character in this book, David, whom comes across, through Ryan's point of view, as a very big antagonist. For them, like, at first we think he's just this enforcer for the saviors as well, but he will be expanded on later on. But throughout all of this, we see that the saviors do not care at all about how they interact with our main character's lives, especially Brian's, because the guy is just trying to find a job, trying to find his way into the world, and the saviors keep messing that up. One of the biggest moments was when they come to find out that Alice herself is pregnant with her and Brian's child. And throughout all this, we see Brian panicking at the thought of becoming a father, but at the same time, he buckles down. I love his attitude here, how despite the fact that he's still too young to be a father, he takes that responsibility and tries to, well, embrace it. He tries to plan to be a better father than his father was to him, and he just goes to show that he's not going to leave Alice just because of this surprise. And I love that loyalty that he shows here. But throughout all this, we see him just getting angrier and angrier as time goes on because the saviors keep interrupting. But what I did like is the tonal shift here. It's definitely a dark undertone with a great rising action, but then a steep climax where everything just goes downward. It goes belly up. Like Brian, in the course of this book, winds up losing his job, 
as his motorcycle crashed out of the Savior's pull him. Him and Alice and Karina and David all for another assignment of starting up more people. And all of this just culminates in, eventually, Brian and Alice just dropping out of school and going on the run. I'm sorry, I actually forgot to mention this detail. Brian's abilities as a fluorescent one. He actually has the ability to heal. I thought this book, all four of them possess unique abilities. For instance, Alice is a starter, Brian is a healer, Karina is a seeker, and David himself is what is defined as a tracker. All of them have unique abilities. Brian himself being the healer who is able to heal any maladies or injuries that some of these people who have fluorescent DNA within them, he's able to cure them of that, which I'm not entirely sure what it is, but I'm pretty sure I don't want to know what some of these people are going through, especially when you consider some of the locations they went to, such as Las Vegas or New York City, essentially major population centers throughout the United States. I'm sorry, I should have mentioned that earlier. But all this culminates in Brian and Alice running away from home and winding up in a motel, of all things. And like I said, this book was definitely the darkest one of the series, but not as dark as book three, which we will talk about now. Moving on to book three, Fallout, told from the point of view of Karina. Now this one was definitely the smallest of the entire series, but also the one that really gets the plot rolling. Book two is what starts off the major climax of Brian and Alice running away from home. This one talks more about that in detail, but it is told from the viewpoint of Karina. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I have mixed emotions when it comes to Karina herself. For one, throughout the first two books, she comes off as antagonistic, constantly wanting Brian and we are left to assume it's because Brian is a taken man, and she likes Brian because, well, he's good looking. But throughout all this book, we finally get her point of view, and we see that she genuinely does care for Brian, but Brian is just not interested in her, plain and simple. And Karina is definitely the older between the two. Not as old as David, who is a full-blown adult, mind you. But she's definitely around college age, I would say. But my feelings for her are conflicted. She comes across as upper class. She's lived an upper class life, gotten away with whatever she wants. She's essentially the daddy's rich little girl. But from another standpoint, her story throughout all of this was definitely one of the darkest as well as definitely one of the creepiest of the bunch because in the beginning of the book we come to where the entire gang is united hang out in a hotel and they actually stumble upon a figure from Brian's past Brian's older brother Taylor whom himself has also become a fluorescent one just not the same as all the others he has more than one ability he has a mix of Brian's and Alice's abilities, where he's able to start people, but he's also able to serve as a healer. But we come to learn that his character is not the greatest whatsoever, because in the end of book two, but throughout all of book three, we see that Karina herself, because of her sensitivity to fluorescence, because of the fact that she is a seeker, in a way, she is more sensitive to the fluorescence itself, and we come to find out that this power, this bioluminescence throughout all of them, has a sentience in and of itself. It's literally like the sentience of the soul, and she is able to have conversations with this, and that we come to find out that the saviors themselves were once part of this whole, whole I want to say, entity but they broke away seeking more individuality. But now their experiments that they are doing are corrupting fluorescence. And this force actually warns Karina to be careful because they have sent down their own experimental branch of fluorescence, which is corruptive and nasty. And we come to find out just who exactly has that. 
And if you're already guessing that it's Taylor, yes, it is in fact Taylor. Brian, as soon as he meets his older brother, you can definitely tell that he is angry and not without cause. I mean, his older brother literally ran out on him just to get away from their father, father and mother, which I can understand that, but you do not leave your sibling behind to deal with it by themselves. No wonder Brian is going to be bitter towards you. And throughout all of this, we see how, uh, especially Brian and David, are arguing with Karina to not bring Taylor into the group, which is understandable. They are, despite their ups and downs, they are a tight-knit group, and bringing an outsider in there would cause a bit of an imbalance with the team chemistry. Not only that, but Taylor seems untrustworthy. Hell, David can sense this. Brian already knows that Taylor is probably not to be trusted. But Karina, stupidly, might I add, honestly, this was just incredibly stupid. She goes along with Taylor, whom she has only known for a day. And her main reason for this is because he looks similar to Brian. He has a more caring nature. And at least we think so. Until later on, when they are teleported away, and we come to find out that Taylor himself is not the nicest of people. In fact, he actively, from what we look like, from what it sounds like in this book, he actively abuses her, taking her abilities by force to seek out more people who have fluorescent DNA at the will of the saviors. He is essentially a tool of the saviors, and this is where the saviors themselves are at their most antagonistic. Because in the beginning of the book, we see that Karina initially tries to pursue a relationship of sorts with David. Not a full-blown relationship or commitment, but just, you know, a kind of friends with benefits type of thing. But the saviors actually intervene and say that the seeker cannot copulate with the tracker. And I'm standing here wondering, what are they trying to do here? What are they trying to say? But then, back to Taylor. So Karina and Taylor, throughout this entire part of the book, I was hooked. I was engaged and actually feeling sorry and fearful for Karina because despite her attitude, nobody deserves to be in an abusive relationship or situation like this. Nobody. And we see how Taylor is simply just draining her of her abilities or even knocking her out, forcing her to serve his will and thus the will of the saviors to start up more people by force. But we come to learn that Taylor himself his mind is slowly crumbling. You can see how he's slowly turning insane because he is drunk off of this new power he's been given by the saviors. He's drunk off of this power, being able to start people up. And it's not even for the saviors, it's for himself to gain more power for himself because he feels powerful, but he's using that to hurt others, and especially Karina, who becomes simply an abuse victim over the course of this novel, which again was the smallest of the bunch but by god it was the most engaging when it comes to plot so again my thoughts on karina my feelings for her are mixed because i did feel sorry for her throughout this book you can feel that she's stuck in a situation where she wants to be with brian because you can genuinely tell that she does care for him but it's never gonna happen because brian himself is in a committed relationship with alice and her mixed feelings towards David, like, she is attracted to him, despite the fact that he is far older than her, and yet she doesn't want a committed relationship with him, because apparently her heart belongs to Brian. She's more interested in a physical relationship with him. Like I said, this book was very complex, very well written, and definitely extremely dark, especially with the subject matter it shows here. Now, to move on to the conclusion. And finally, we come to book four, Lost Souls, told from the viewpoint of David, the tracker. And if you were to ask me, out of all four characters that are introduced throughout this series, who my favorite was, I could honestly tell you it's a tie between Brian and David. David himself is a very complex character. At first, I thought he was just this antagonizer, 
this sort of servant to the saviors who is going to force Brian and Alice and Karina to find more souls, light them up, all that stuff. But we come to find out that he's an unwilling pawn, and he is not a fan of the saviors whatsoever. Throughout the series, when he's first introduced in book two, he keeps telling us that he has this little sister that he's trying to look out for. But then we come to learn in this book that that is a lie. David himself doesn't have a sister. He has a young daughter, born from a coupling that he had uh, with a young woman who is essentially a drug addict. David comes to this apartment, finds the woman knocked out, doped up on drugs, and he comes to find the young baby girl stand sitting in the crib, just practically abandoned. But what does he do? He does not abandon this child. He takes this little girl and raises her to the best of his ability, despite the fact that he is a wanted crook. David has done a lot of bad things. He's got into robberies, he has done drugs, all of that. He has done a lot of bad. But his biggest redeeming quality is the love that he has for his little girl. And quite frankly, this complexity makes him a very interesting character. One whom I found myself more than willing to follow along with, especially because this is the final book of the series. Now, David's whole plot, we see that he has these complex emotions towards Karina. He does care for her a lot, and we see that he does respect Brian for sticking by Alice's side. Even more so when we come to find out later on in the book that apparently Brian and Alice's child, whom was taken by the saviors, and whom we were led to believe had died after being exposed to the disease, was in fact one of a pair of twins. And this young boy, who is a perfect mix of Alice and Brian, has a very large connection to the fluorescence. And honestly, I like how David over the course of this grows this sort of respect for Brian. And we see that he does care for Alice a bit. He feels protective of her because Alice herself is a complete fish out of water in this situation. We see how Alice is essentially mentally trying to cope with all of this, being on the run from home, finally learning that one of her children was still alive, all of that. And David recognizes this, and he feels a bit of respect for Brian. Whereas at first I thought these two were going to be major rivals, we come to see that they don't particularly like each other, but they're willing to have the others back. More importantly, we actually get a close interaction with one of the saviors, whom our characters, funnily enough, call Judas. Which I think is a bit of poetic irony right there. <laughs> but, again, David, very well done character, especially when he goes to retrieve his daughter, trying to keep her safe, but then we come to find out that he's now on the run from the police, because the man whom he chose to try to look out for her while he's gone has essentially called the police, like his wife has called the police. And trying to nab his daughter makes it really look like he has just kidnapped a child, and now he's even more on the run than he already was. But throughout all of this, we see that the government themselves are noticing that there is this sudden plague where these people are just all of a sudden dropping dead. We see that the actions the saviors have taken have massive consequences, where the world is just seemingly having this massive plague spread at worldwide. And that is a terrifying prospect that this disease, which was initially killing the saviors, is now killing a good majority of humans too. We see that David, knowing the fact that he is a crook, being used by the government to show these experiments, to, show, to try to find out what this disease is through him, it was actually pretty terrifying. More than that, we see that David himself is just trying to clean up his act throughout all this. He's trying to do better for his daughter. Like, that's his one single-minded goal is to look out for his daughter. And I can full-on respect that in a character. Which is why he and Brian are tied for my favorite characters throughout the story. But, to put it simply, this all culminates in the fluorescence trying to guide our four main characters into stopping the saviors. Especially after realizing the disease that was killing them is now killing a large chunk of humanity. Humanity was not meant to have this bioluminescent DNA within their bodies. 
and in some cases it is killing them. But we also come to find out that David himself has a sickness within him that is slowly poisoning his own fluorescence. But this all culminates in where they have a confrontation with the saviors which results in Brian's death. And yeah, that was a major shocker to me to watch Brian actually be killed. But then, their son, Brian and Alice's son, confronts the saviors and shows them the exact consequences of what they have done, causing them to repent and then just leave them alone. But now, Brian and Alice's son actually manages to bring Brian back to life at the cost of his fluorescence. Granted, I don't think there was any sort of negative fallout from this, like I don't think he got his erratic heartbeat back, but just knowing the fact that Brian was able to be brought back to life and the saviors were defeated in such a way, being shown the consequences of what they are doing reminded me a lot of Aragon and how it ended with Inheritance, which I will cover in a future review. But one of the things I definitely liked is that David and his daughter definitely get their happy ending by going back to David's home state of Hawaii. And that final moment where we see David and his daughter just playing on the beach that he grew up, up going to as a child was a very wholesome moment. But also, let's talk about Karina here. We get the vibe that she, that David cares for her a lot, like he has these conflicting emotions towards her. Especially when Karina, in her dumbest moment possible, actually calls the police and because of this, it gets David arrested. So because of this, it really sours his relationship with Karina. But after Brian's death, we see how Karina and Alice have a shouting match. Where Karina full-on admits that she has had feelings for Brian throughout this entire series, which we know of. But neither of them did. And yet, surprisingly enough, after Brian dies... But then comes back to life, Karina simply states that she doesn't feel the same way for Brian anymore, like, those feelings that she had for him are gone. Which initially I was going to call bull on, but then I thought about it. Could it be possible that the saviors themselves were manipulating Karina to go after Brian in their sick experiment to try to essentially create more human savior hybrids to try to save their species. And when I thought about that, it definitely comes across that way. Especially when Karina all of a sudden is immediately trying to go back to David right after Brian is brought back to life and she simply states, well, I don't like him anymore. David, however, is not buying this. So, throughout all of this, the ones who I feel get the happy ending at the very least are Brian, Alice, and David to an extent. Karina, however, now has to deal with the fact that she cannot get close to anyone who doesn't have fluorescence, what lest she be given major headaches or migraines, practically, or just pain. And she initially wanted David, despite the fact that she's not the biggest fan of kids. But now she's left with this fluorescence curse in her mind. The others have been able to move on, but Karina is left with an unhappy ending. Do I hope that she does get one in the future? Possibly. But I don't see that happening with her massive amount of mistakes that she has made but all in all again david and brian are definitely my favorite characters because of how they are complex they've had bad experiences but they choose to try to do better for one reason or another mostly revolving around their own kids and i loved that so with all that being said let's move on to the final score Overall, you've heard me gushing about the series, so you should obviously know I'm going to give this entire book series a good 10 out of 10. Not only for its engaging plot and unique twist on science fiction or even modern fantasy, but also the engaging story itself, which kept me hooked from start to finish. Not to mention, also, very well fleshed out characters. The unique premise of having each book being from the different point of view of a main character throughout this entire series. The alien species being the antagonist. Not to mention, also very well done romances. Not all of them are going to be clean cut like Brian and Alice are, who are practically attached at the hip for each other. 
Some of them are going to be messy, like David and Karina's was. Overall, though, I would say this series is damn well worth the read. I cannot encourage you all enough to check this one out, especially since you can actually get all four books, not just individually, but in one massive gathered-up paperback. I cannot recommend this one enough. It is a very engaging read, and one that I encourage you all to take your time with, especially with its concepts of the soul. All these different colors that are shown here, representing the colors of a person's soul, in a way. And in my perspective, I would say that this is, again, a very well-done read, and I was more than happy to find on the cover Miss Anastasia's work. I am more than honored to talk about it, and I hope my review has inspired some of you all to check it out for yourself as well. Anyways, you guys, thank you so much for listening, and once again, thank you so much for helping to bring this channel up to 500 subscribers. I pray that I can be able to help engage you all and be able to bring more great content in the future. Anyways, thank you all for listening. This is Rambling Collector signing off. If you like this video, feel free to leave a like, comment down below, or subscribe if you want to learn more. Anyways, you all have a fantastic day, happy Thanksgiving, and keep reading, my fellow readers. Goodbye.